mindset of the young Charlotte and how she was, um, and there are some attributes of her thoughts that are already there present and I think are very, very important. Uh, to see what motivated her in this book. So this is the letter, Sunday. My dear friend, and this is Charles Mason's writing. Mr. Hust's son wrote to me the other day, and in his letter was the following excellent advice. Choose no friends but those whose society you would like to enjoy through eternity. It is not a, is it not a beautiful thought? The business of making that eternity a happy one belongs to ourselves. I am all alone here. There is no one with whom I can seek that sympathy which is such a craving of my nature. I live within five minutes of the sea, and yet until this evening I have not even been there. I had no one to go with and could not summon courage to venture alone in a place so strange to me. This evening, however, old Mrs. Reed took the matter in hand and after a great deal of persuasion, succeeded in getting me to try the experiment. I got into a retired part of the beach and stood watching the sea, half inclined to cry, half inclined to laugh, and more than half inclined to scream with a strange wall of joy, and throw myself in and join with the mad gambols of the waves. Oh, it was grand to watch the vast thing. The view, bounded only by the darkness of the horizon, where the green sea and the blue sky melted into one, and there it lay, its great bosom, seeming to be ever heaving and swelling, with deep emotions of gratitude and love to him, who made it what it is, with its endless hymn of praise to its great creator, from the depths of his mighty heart, and filling the air with his deep strong cadences. What are the wild waves saying? I cannot tell you know tell you sorry I cannot tell you how passionately how intensely I love the sea this evening when I first saw the great boundless expanse of waters and heard the rushing of the waves I feel my heart beat and my whole being stood as if I don't know as if what for I do not know of anything else that could have had just the same effect. I never look upon it as a mass of insensate matter, but as something having a grand sublime existence, nearer and akin to the all pervading spirit, essence of the Godhead, than any other creature. I believe that were I left to follow the dictates of my heart, I should worship not the sun, nor any of the heavenly bodies, nor yet any of the thin offspring of the earth, but the sea. The mighty sea would be the idol of my heart. For well, as it is, it performs a nobler, holier office for me. It is one of the ministers of his that do his pleasure. It is mighty and eloquent preacher telling of the wondrous power and majesty of his God and making me feel my own exceeding impotence and insignificance. What, what um, calls your attention about, about this letter? It's creation. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's doing something, or she's reflecting something that is very foundational in her own process of education, which is what she defined or called a meditation. She's meditating. Yes, she's observing the creation and experiencing it and then putting into beautiful words the, the, her impression of it, leading it to worship and, and interacting it with her knowledge of God. So you see that from very early on, there is a very strong devotional nature and this idea of bringing everything to her service of God and her discipleship. It, it, remember that it began with quoting the advice of a teacher telling her to only have the best friends that you would like to have for the rest
as of eternity. And she said, this is a marvelous advice. So you see, she was from the beginning looking and working on developing a, a, a worldview of learning and life that will integrate spirituality with right conduct for the preparation of the um, of the world to come, integrating into it the experience of nature, the knowledge of morals, and the teaching of scripture, all integrated in one. And I think that in that sense it's very revealing to what she was aiming for and what will lead her in that. What was her experience, she found a way to convey it to others. So that's what I mean when I say education as discipleship. It's this holistic view of the development of the whole person so that uh, you can experience learning in this profound way and not just like as if an utilitarian thing. Okay, I think we have run out of time. So I don't know if there's any question before we conclude. I think that uh, Miss Mason, or should I say, uh, yeah, Ms. Mason, her yeah. experience in the, being in the beach in southern New England, I think that she was just, I could be wrong, but I think she was meditating of the wonders of God, what he created. I mean, the beautiful earth, yes, sky, yes, beautiful surrounding, yes, beautiful sounds of the waves, the roaring, yes. the seagull, yes, she was meditating all this. And and say that it is wonderful that God yes. created all this for us. Yes. And how can I enlighten myself mm -hmm. with God? Mm -hmm. So I think it was the beginning of wisdom for her. Yes. To to convey her message to other people. Correct. Whether Correct. they be young or not. Correct. Or older. Yes. To share her experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, right. that's the way I see it. Yeah, that's that's correct. I and that the, the, wrong, but it's the way I see it. No, no, it's correct. Okay. And the, the marvelous thing also mm -hmm. is that she was able to, recognizing what the Bible taught, she realized that children are capable of this same profound appreciation of truth, beauty, and nature to the glory of God. They don't need to graduate first in order to get there. That's, that's with them from the beginning. And you just have to protect it and, and encourage it. And that's a very, very uh, good, wonderful insight uh, that we'll, we'll come back to. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too long after, so we'll just finish here. And then we, if there's any other questions, I just want to, to finish here. And, uh, so let me let us finish with the word of prayer. God, Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, visit, we pray, the, this congregation with thy love and favor. Enlighten our minds more and more with the light of the everlasting gospel. Graft in our hearts the love of the truth, increasing us to religion. Nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy, keep us in the same, O blessed Spirit, whom with the Father and the Son together we worship and glorify as one God, world without end. Thank you.